Today I'm going to take you through what I do to prepare my shops for the holiday season and what I hope will be a busy quarter four. A lot of this video is going to refer to Etsy but I also have a website my own shop and everything that I'm going to talk about can be done there and possibly elsewhere on the internet wherever you may be online. So take what serves you and leave the rest. Okay well the first thing is SEO. I mean it has to be doesn't it? Before we can stand out of the crowd and, and grab a buyer's attention we first have to make sure that we are in the crowd and that's with SEO. With my Etsy shop and my website I have to admit I don't play with the keywords too much because providing you've done the work properly at the start, you shouldn't have to tweak it too much. I know that Etsy do suggest that you add seasonal festive keywords, but I'm not necessarily convinced that it matters unless your item is Christmas themed or holiday themed or whatever. And the reason being is that at this time of year, people are searching for gifts. They're not necessarily searching for Christmas gifts. It's just kind of a given. Personally, prefer my SEO to be uh, gifting themed because that's my niche, but it's more broad so that it stands the test of time and I don't have to keep tweaking it depending on the season. And I prefer to add seasonal touches visually as opposed to the SEO. What I'll be doing is just giving them a bit of a review and if there are any listings there where the SEO is below par and I can think of a couple that I've got, then I will tweak them. But the ones that I've done properly should be fine. And with regards to finding good keywords, it's important to note that I will try and take off my seller hat and put on my buyer hat and think like a buyer and what phrases and keywords they will be searching for, which is often very different to what we as sellers think people will be searching for. <laughs> so researching SEO is a task all of its own. It's not just a five minute, oh, it's not just a five minute jobby. I like to give it some attention and that will be job number one. Job number two is to review my photos. I do this every year and <laughs> somehow I still end up having to change them and tweak them and improve them. I hate taking product photographs. I've made no secret of that in the past. I just don't like it. Since I brought in my website, some of the photo ratios are different. Some are square, some are rectangular and it's just a bit of a mess. I like it to be nice and clean and consistent. And it hasn't been. Also with Etsy, last year I put in a watermark on all of my photographs. That wasn't to stop people from stealing my photographs, doesn't work. That was mainly uh, for my uh, shop identity because Etsy is so keen to remove it, aren't they? <laughs> Obviously this year they've brought in times when the photographs will appear as a square as opposed to a rectangle, which is annoying. I'm not going to change my ratios on Etsy but I do want to take the watermark out and I'm going to bring in my shop branding a bit more in a different way so that regardless of what shape Etsy chooses on any given day it's not going to crop out my little logo. Nice try Etsy but I'm on to you. Slowly but I'm on to you. And then I'm going to do the exact same with my website so that all of the things are consistent. That's going to be a whole job all by itself as well and it's going to be one that I'm not going to enjoy but if I do it right I should see an uptick in sales because um, photos are king. And if you're finding this video helpful so far uh, consider subscribing for more nonsense. I rock up every week with some. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to do is review my descriptions and titles on both my Etsy shop and my website. I'm going to make sure that they are buyer friendly so we're not talking about keyword stuffing here. I try not to do that anyway but yeah they need to be to the point. Um, also descriptions I need to make sure that all the information is there for the uh, buyers it's not just a case of putting in your SEO you want to make sure that if the buyers are reading your descriptions that they get the information they need we're not just talking about measurements and the like here we're talking about maybe how long delivery takes or what your um, refund policies are etc you can put that at the bottom it helps buyers settle into trusting you and the product and so we have to let our buyers know that we are trustworthy any way we can. And I think the description is a pretty underutilized place to do that. I for one need to get better at it. So that's another thing that I will be doing. So the next thing I'll be doing, and I hate this one too, is reviewing um, the postage and delivery times. Thankfully this one shouldn't be too difficult for me this year because I have recently done that. You just need to make sure that the postage costs are accurate. You're delivery times and then as I mentioned before making sure that that information is in the description 
It's one of those really boring admin tasks, but also one that can help increase your conversion rate quite a lot. So boring as it may be, it's worth putting some time into. Therefore, I will be. And I kind of mentioned this next one, shop policies. Reviewing them, making sure that they're up to date, and as I've mentioned a couple of times now already, putting the most important parts of it in your descriptions, because if it's difficult for people to read descriptions, I promise you they will not be going to your shop policies either. In fact, most buyers will only go to the shop policies when there's a problem and you kind of want to get there before that if at all possible. So even if it feels like you're duplicating information, stick in some of the important things like the refund policies etc. It can just help you manage buyer expectations and it might help also reduce the chances of needing to deal with refunds later on and unhappy customers because none of us want unhappy customers. We want them to love their stuff! And last but not least, branding. What you can do on a place like Etsy is pretty limited. Um, I can do more on my website, but I mentioned earlier in the video that I like to set the tone and the seasons visually. It just hits harder. It's quicker. We are visual creatures. For example, both on my Etsy shop and on my website, I already have my autumn banner up, which is taken over from my summer banner. And then I'll be switching that over to my festive banner, probably the 1st of December, because it might annoy people if I do it too soon. <laughs> but I have my banner ready to go. And this is one easy way that I can sort of set the tone in my shop. The only times that I will add seasonal elements into a product image is if the product is seasonal itself. So a Christmas product will have Christmas elements, etc., etc. If it's more of an evergreen product that can be sold at any time of the year, then I will take out the seasonal elements because it's, it's more general. And I think for me, that's a job that is more or less taken care of. I did all of the groundwork last year, so now it's just a case of switching up my banners. And um, oh, and I have a Halloween one too. I can't wait to use that. <sighs> now I am just gonna jump in and say that if everything that I'm saying sounds like a you know, great to, thing to do, but you know, Kim, I've got hundreds of listings. I don't have the time. I would suggest doing this with your best sellers that tends to be less overwhelming. You don't need to do every single listing in your shop. I have far fewer, so it's a lot easier for me to do. And if you're after some more tips, Etsy have released their festive trend report. There were a couple of nuggets in there, and I've made a video about that. I'll, um, I'll put it here. I do have a giggle at their expense, I'm not gonna lie. That's why I like doing them. But I do reference the, the important things as well that I think that we should be taking note of. So give that a watch and I'll see you there.